Thursday. Yes, team, how you doing? We are live and direct here with Kev Bland. Kev can't actually see you guys because um, I've shared it live on Facebook. And we're actually just having a discussion about that, which we'll start with, because I think it's a little thing that we can work on that would potentially hold you guys back. So Leah, Kev, we've got Leah Slater, Michael Brocklebank, Foxy, who you met on the fan dance, Lana, too many. The, the full squad's in. The, uh, the full squad's in. I can't go through all those names. Richard Pitts, Sarah Carrigan, Lana, Michael, Michelle, Kate, Andrew, Tracy, Jonathan, Nick. We're all here. We're all here. Okay. So one thing Kevin and I were talking about, guys, um, just before we came on camera, before we're going to discuss overcoming fear, was this thing that we all have of just giving up too easy. So, so many of you will have experienced this now when you came on board and you were like, I can't use my fitness pal. I can't track my calories. I can't get my head around this. Um, and it's just a kind of mindset that a lot of people drift into. And we were discussing how, who remembers who used to play snake on the Nokia 6210s, right? Um, hopefully some of you should be old enough. Or well, we had Nokias and we had Ericsson's and we had Motorola's. And the first time that you then moved on to trying to use an iPhone or a Blackberry when Blackberries were the things, it was like fucking impossible, right? You couldn't even send a text message for like three days. But then what happened was because you valued your phone, because you valued Facebook, because you value Instagram, we practiced. We used these things every day. And the more we did it time and time and time again, all of a sudden, using Facebook is the easiest thing on the world. Using my fitness pal becomes second nature. You know, Zoom, you guys, this is what actually triggered the conversation because Kev was like, how come the guys aren't all on Zoom? I'm like, mate, it's a fucking nightmare. Like loads of them don't know how to use it or they're not comfortable with it or they kind of get overwhelmed or they get frustrated. Um, so we just always end up doing it on Facebook. So yeah, Kev, what's your thoughts on that? Welcome. Um, <laughs> and then tell us a little bit about yourself to start with. I've told well, you guys my... quite a bit already. So so what are my thoughts on like breaking through into new tech? It's not just new tech, is it? It's, it's everything, anything new that we approach. We have a motivation that we want to do it because we understand that it's, uh, it's going to be useful for us. <clears throat> and that motivation gets us on the path to start something. And then we come up against an issue uh, and then it's down to emotional resilience, you know, um, and, and that's the state of mind, isn't it? And how you approach things and, and what's happening at that point. I mean, I've like, we were chatting about music, weren't we? And, and I, I, um, I write and record and, and produce as well. And some of the fucking technical issues you come up against, you're like, ah, oh! it's like, fuck it. Uh, but yeah, you know, you do come back to it and it, it does depend upon uh, your emotional resilience. And where your mind's at at that time as you approach it. Um, always interesting stuff, mate. Always well, interesting. Discussed... The human condition. So we discussed emotional intelligence when <clears throat> we were on on one yeah. of our other chats. What can you go a little bit into deeper? What you mean by emotional resilience? I've not actually heard that one before. Just just having that ability to uh, calm yourself down when you need to overcome an issue. You know, because so you, like, you have that's the issue. People, yeah, that's have, the issue people are facing with Zoom. They get flustered. Absolutely. So you have a resilience. Can't do it. Yeah, you have a resilience to physical uh, pain, don't you? And physical, you know, like doing a marathon, etc. That that's kind of although that does teeter into the emotional resilience as well. But emotional resilience is really just keeping your shit together. You know, it's like when you let you over. Let, I mean, let's just say you know you're trying to get on Zoom and you're getting all angry. Why? why you, okay so you don't know how to do something and it's frustrating but you can get why are you getting in a massive flat when you can just sit down make yourself a cup of coffee and just have a little breather and go okay right let's look at this differently or let's see how we can get some assistance let's google what's going on or there's so much help these days it's fucking unbelievable so the emotional resilience part and again we fear a lot of it comes back to um just calming yourself down breathing a little bit and just hold on a minute you know how important is this uh yeah, I guess that's something to, to, to start with telling us a little bit, bit more about your background as well i guess mm. that's something that's 
well, that I know personally, and you know, that's ma massive in the military because oh, God, we're yeah. in this situation and we can't just start flapping around and start shooting everyone and pinging bullets off left, right and centre. No, we can't. So if we uh, take pick my career up then from my military career, because I did a couple of years uh, after I got kicked out of school, I was working in a garage before that, and that required a lot of emotional resilience because it was fucking hardcore. But that aside, in the military, <clears throat> you know, you you are always you're gonna you are faced with life or death experiences and, and life or death situations. It, it's continual. Uh, it when you're out in the field, obviously that that's the case. So that what that comes down to is slick drills more than anything is, is, is immediate action drills, slick drills to get you through something and team effort, team effort. But people do lose it. I have seen people lose it quite fucking badly uh, in, a, in a lot of different ways. But how, how were we trained? I think we were just battered. We, I mean, especially being in the Marines, we were just battered into a point of. You, 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 you didn't sweat the fucking small stuff. Yeah. Ever. And the, and the small stuff to me, when I left the court, was fucking huge to other people. You know, like I would be like, oh, don't worry about it, mate. You're not getting fucking shot at. You know what I mean? And people would be all upset over, over things. And I just, I couldn't see. I couldn't see that. But I mean, to be fair, I didn't have any compassion when I left the Marines. It was like I'd had it all battered out of me. And that, that's not, I wouldn't want to be that guy anymore. But yeah, when you're doing a job like that, you, you, you've got to be, you've got to be very fucking tough mentally. And it is at the deficit of being a proper human being. <laughs> I will say that. But yeah. What would, your, what would your advice be on? Because I know something we did a training on how to stop worrying. And one of the biggest things that the guys face is that we have, a lot of worriers, people that worry about the future, they worry about whether they're going to succeed, they're worried, just, just generally worried about a lot of things, worried about money, worried about the future. And I think building, yeah. building into what you said there, it's a case of we can, we can be this person, right, where it's like I can get in a ring and I can scrap anyone. I mm. can kind of run an ultra marathon, my first one, and it wasn't that difficult for me because I've got this physical sheer bloody mindedness. Yeah. And it comes down to dealing with a difficult person in a situation or a very, mm. what would be a very small worry compared to that, but it's emotional, not physical. And I can really struggle with it. I think um, it's obviously different for everybody, but I remember worrying and, and about a lot of things. Now there's a, the Buddhist call, the dark thoughts, fundamental darkness. And I, I, I do discuss this a lot with my group because the guys are, you know, I'm, I'm having dark thoughts. This is happening. This, I'm thinking about this. I think my kid's going to get kidnapped and fucking hell, you know what I mean? These, these are not rational. Yeah. They're not rational thoughts. And I think when we, when we do start to go down that road, it can become very overwhelming and it impacts massively. You know, you lose your sleep. And when you start losing your sleep, you start thinking shit. I think one of the ways I got out of it, and it's, it's a personal thing, I, I stopped watching the news. I stopped listening to the radio as well because I was getting triggered. I mean, I, I did I did have a bit of PTSD, like, so I, and I never got diagnosed, but it was fucking obvious what it was. Yeah. And it wasn't really talked about back then. I mean, I've been left over 20 years now. But I stopped, I started to try and find the trigger points and started to just fuck them off out of my life. And that, that was the first thing. And the other thing is, you know, this is the difference between, we're going to talk about grow, growth from discomfort, but when I, I talk about a fixed and a growth mindset, and have you heard of the two terms? Yes. Okay, so... I've, I've used a safety mindset and a growth mindset. Okay, so... Um, the fixed and growth mindset comes from, let me just quickly grab the book. So Carol Dweck is a doctor who worked a lot in education and she studied the difference between um, the way that kids thought before they did exams. So she's got these two growth, this growth and this fixed mindset. I'm going to quickly run through them. So a fixed mindset is like, um, People with in the fixed mindset have a tendency to want to look good. 
and to be seen to be clever. Yeah. They're likely to avoid challenge, give up easily, see effort as worthless, ignore useful feedback and feel threatened by other people's success. Yeah. Now we all fucking go into that every now and then. Sometimes it's a victim mindset as well. It's really this fixed mindset is approaching problems as though they're just going to fuck you up. You know what I mean? This, this fixed mindset, I think we all, we've all been in it or we drip in and out of it, depending on what we're trying to achieve. So almost like you've decided the outcome before even trying. Absolutely. I, like, a, a typical example for me, because obviously I've got an educational background. I, I, I used to lecture at university as well. And it's like, I can't fucking do maths. Well, you can do maths. But the minute, you know, the minute you start like, using that, that personal language of I can't do this, I can't do that. You've shot yourself in the foot. Yeah. You know what I mean? You've put yourself in a position where you're like, oh, you, you just, you, you've got, you know, you, you've already undermining your own self-belief. You've, you've basically fucked it, you know? So d- developing a growth mindset is about, you know what? It's not that I can't do maths. I'm just, I'm not that good. And what I, when I've done a lot of private uh, tutelage as well, and I say, look, the language, let's stop the language you're using, right? It's not that you can't do maths. I'm going to tell you that you've never had anyone who can fucking teach you properly, right? That's what I'm going to tell you. You've never been in a situation where you felt heard, comfortable enough to ask a question that you need to ask. Yes, that's massive. It's huge, mate, for fear of feeling stupid. And it's like, you know, you're not fucking stupid if you don't know something. If you don't know something, you don't know it. If I walk through the woods and I don't know the name of a flower, and I'm with someone who does, and he's like, oh, you can't believe you don't even fucking know that was a fucking such and such. I'm like, ah. mate, if I don't know, I don't know. I'm not yeah. going to feel bad, even if you're championing that you know something I don't. Well yeah. done. Great. I- I'm glad that you shared it. You know what I mean? The fact that you shared it from a position of, oh, I fucking know and you don't, just basically means I think you're a dick. <laughs> the growth mindset, which is where we really want to be, Right. This is the desire to learn and a tendency to embrace challenge um, persisting in the face of setbacks. Well, I fucking can't make this work. You know what I mean? Persisting in that growth. It's like, OK, put it down for a minute. Back to it. Breathe. Have a minute. Breathe it in. Uh, you see effort as a path to mastery and mastery. But then that ask for help builds in there, right? So what, I you've got it, mate. You've and got it. Ask ask why help. Help. We're human beings. I don't want to because I feel stupid. Fuck feeling stupid. It's better than being stupid, isn't it? Yeah. So you do, you will, you, that is, you know, learning from criticism. This is another thing I talk to guys about is I don't care how fucking hard someone hits me with criticism, right? And they may say it and it might make me want to batter them, but then I have to take that away and go, have they got a point? And if they've got a point, I'm like, yeah, they've got a point just didn't like the way they fucking dressed it up you know what i mean yeah and that i learned to take criticism in the marines like you just fucking wouldn't believe it and it makes you really hard um i don't necessarily i don't think it's a good thing long term and it wasn't a good thing to be treated that way i mean i, I got the king's badge i got the best recruit training so i was obviously fucking hardcore on it all but um the impact after I left was, was really difficult. The impact it had on everyone else because what, what was normal for me was a fucking long way off normal for everyone else. So yeah, the growth mindset will find lessons and inspiration in the success of others as well. And it, this all ties in to the fear thing and uh, as well. And, you know, that emotional resilience and under, being rational about your fears. And that's, that's a big deal. Breathing will always get you through quite a level of fear because you can be, you can, you can reach rational thought process when you get plenty of oxygen in your noggin. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like, fuck me. I'm getting shot at. Fuck. You know what I mean? I'm like, fucking get shot. But then it's like, take a breath, have a listen. What is actually coming down? It's just one fucking guy pinging a few rounds. I'm sat here. There's 30 of us. We're fucking bombed up to shit. You know what I mean? It's like, make a quick call. Right, that seems sorted, move on. So it's kind of like, that's an extreme example, but it will always come down to learning to be in the fucking moment, like 
when you, you have a dark thought, it's like, well, uh, is it actually happening? Has it happened? Is it likely to happen? You know, it's, there's a lot about, in, in terms of, you know, mental health, there's, there's a lot to trigger us um, throughout the media. Then we hear that from other people, you know, it gets, it's perpetuated, it, it, people, we are designed to look for the negative, basically. We, there's a lot of fucking undoing that. We are designed to survive. Our minds will trigger any, will look for anything that's going to fucking kill us and just keep going, oh, that might kill you, that might kill you. That, that's how we're made. That's, that's why we're, there's so many of us on the planet. So again, it's about accepting that that's always going to happen. Let's begin with the end in mind, Lee. We're going to fucking die, mate. We're all going to be dead one day. What are you going to do from now till you're dead? And you don't know when you're going to be dead. So what are you going to do? So, you know, you can be as scared as you fucking want. And you can be as safe and wrap yourself up in cotton wool, but you're still going to die. And in the Western culture, we don't really embrace that. We don't embrace that we're not here forever. We think we're going to live forever. So accept your fate and make the most of your life. And that pulls back to being in the moment, right? Because this is something, I shared a video with the guys from Tyson Fury a few weeks back. And he says, you know, I used to have a lot of worries in my life. I used to worry about everything. Um, and again, something that I re-coached was the, the theory of between like a sapling and a tree. So, and kind of teaching the guys to realize that there is no worry too small because what starts off as a tiny little sapling of a worry, if we don't challenge it and deal with it, you know, by the end of weeks, seven days, it's bigger, 14 days, it's starting to grow into a little bit more of a tree. By the time it's not been dealt with for a year, it's a yeah. fucking oak tree and we can't take it down. But he brought, simply brought back to building into that. And I think people can almost take when that said as it's be it's being depressive that oh we're all gonna die one day oh that's really <laughs> that was it. yeah no but he was he was saying um you know i used to worry about everything but now all i worry about is being happy today and even if i'm not happy today i understand that that's normal and that there's another day tomorrow and i can try it's to be there. happy tomorrow but i don't think past that because worries <laughs> always that. in the future right I think, you know, pe some people think that, you, you know, you, you, you get to a level of happiness and you stay there. It's not fucking true. You know, it doesn't happen like that. You, you're always going to have bad days. You're always going to be triggered by something because, you know, the, there's just... There'll always be obstacles. There's, all, there's always something cropping up. And then, you know, it's like if you've not, if you're not took enough fluid on board, you start to feel low. Yeah. And if you're hungry... All these different things, if you've not quite got enough sleep. So I think, you know, life is, some people are, are, are more on that emotional spectrum, up and down, up and down. You know, some people are more like that than others. My little brother's just like fucking flatline steady. He's a, he's a former Marine as well, my little brother. I've always been a bit peaky. Um, I'm not, you know, and that's just the way I'm built. So I've had to offset that and, and understand myself to not get too over the top sometimes. And, and, and when I'm having a bit of a slump, try and, you know, go, put everything into perspective, practice gratitude, go out there and help someone else less fortunate. Fuck it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think there's so many things you can... You can worry about everything if you want. You can sit yourself in a little, knot yourself up in a little ball of fucking sadness forever. But you've got this life. And I think for me, the biggest part of life is about connecting with other people and community. And that, when you start to do more, I think you worry less. Yeah. I think it's all yeah. about action. Action is the only answer. That was the key thing that I wrote down from when we first spoke. Take positive action. That's it. So, yeah, you're going to be scared. You're supposed to fucking be scared. <laughs> you know what I mean? That yeah. will keep you alive. But you've got to ask yourself, is it rational? Am I, 
you know, I would say, and there's a lot of stuff I take, I took from Tai Chi years ago when I started Tai Chi. It's like, am I, am I under any immediate danger? No, I'm not. Am I starving? No. Am I exposed to the weather and the wind? Am I going to die from exposure? No. Am I able to breathe? Yeah. So you go through this little survival thing. It's like, actually, you know, touch the fuck, touch anything that's around you, touch the floor, touch something. You know, these are, these are anchoring techniques. Pick something up. Have a fucking good look at it. Smell it. Feel it. Bring yourself. These are anchoring techniques to bring yourself to the moment. Grounding techniques. And I know it is a very real thing. I've had, I've been through the panic attacks, the anxiety triggered to fuck uh, from the past without even knowing it was going to happen, you know? So what we're, what we're kind of saying there is whether it's a client coming to me and saying, Lee, I'm really struggling. Can you help me with this? But they don't manage to actually ask that because they're afraid. Yeah. It's essentially, it's the same emotional trigger yeah. as I'm about to die. Yeah. My mind struggles to differentiate between shit, that one's real and that one's completely not. There's no difference in you, uh, the way the body reacts to fear, whether it's real or not. There's no fucking difference. You know, you still get spiked out with, with all, all them chemicals that kick off that are basically, you know, preparing you to, to fight or run away. So that's why. So we, I, the acronym I use is fear. So fear is false evidence appearing real. Yeah. Or um, false events. Yeah. And going back to, Again, I don't know what other techniques you've got in terms of that grounding. <clears throat> what we worked on is thinking of these spheres in terms of a court of law. So right. if I was in front of a judge and a jury now with my yeah. solicitor and I had to present to him basically what you said there, that this is a very real fear. Yeah, it, it, it's immediate and, and the outcome could be death. Almost all of our fears, like you just said there, you wouldn't have a single grain of evidence, would you? There, there simply isn't any. Apart no, from that's, a good way, that's a good way of looking at it. You, you're basically rationalising it. And if you, you know, like you said, you've got to present it to someone to, to prove your fear is there. But the fear is there, isn't it, for people? So what would you coach on the guys? So guys, we'll come on to some questions at the end. Um, but for anyone who's struggling to to overcome fear. And I know this is some of the smallest things with the group from applying for new jobs to I can't use computers to going to a different gym to try and CrossFit. The biggest one to me is, is I, I lost my shit with loads of people on the last five week transformation. Okay. What well, wasn't loads of them. It was actually three of them. Um, because three of them decided to say after five weeks and me emailing them every single week, oh, I didn't really feel like I got the help and support that I needed from you. You haven't been in touch with me. Okay. Which was a, a kind of just a complete bullshit lie. They hadn't done anything and they would never asked for help once. Now there's one part of that, which is just juvenile, irresponsible, justifying blame, complain crowd. But there's also for me, there's a feeling that Maybe one of them may have wanted to ask for help, but fear stopped them. So from all yeah, of I those mean, spectrums, jumping off a bridge, anything that people are afraid of, what yeah, advice yeah. can you give them for how can we start to overcome this? Because once well, we get past that, that, that's where life begins, right? Well, on the other side of fear is everything you fucking dreamed of, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. So it, obviously it's... it's it's very personal what people's fears are, but I think ultimately... So that's critical as well. We're not saying this is the same for everyone and this one... No, well, it's not. It, it's not. Yeah. And, and again, with... I mean, I'll have a discussion with you later on on, um, on that, what you experienced with those, because I've, I've had that. I've had that all the way through my teaching career as well. Like a kid at the end of a course will go, yeah, you fucking didn't do this, you didn't do that. And I was like, oh, fuck you now, you know what I mean? You yeah. had the same opportunity as everyone else. I just didn't recognise that, you know, some kids and some people have that massive bravado front. I didn't realise behind that was somebody was very unsure of themselves. Yeah. And I think this whole fear business works on a level of what we, you know, when we talk about agency, like that level of control that you feel you have over yourself and your life. So... Fear probably 
may stem from the lack of self-confidence in all areas. Massively. It, it might just be, or, or on a personal level, it might be something that happened when you were younger that you don't even remember about. Remember, because some people are scared of things like spiders and snakes. And, and you know, if you're scared of a spider, go and fucking pick one up. Pick a tiny one up, and then pick a bigger one up, then a bigger one up. Or just go out and get a fucking tarantula and wrestle it to the ground. There's a lot of different ways to face fear, isn't there? Yeah. And, and there's a lot of different outcomes that come from it. So it's a touchy old business. But from a personal level, building self-confidence will help you overcome fear. I truly believe that. And, and that is go out and do things that fucking make your bum twitch. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Go out and test yourself a little bit. Go out and do these things. People are scared of heights, naturally. Um, that's that's inbuilt. People are scared of deep water. That's inbuilt. People are scared of be of social disapproval and being cast out of the tribe. Yeah. That, for me, is probably a fear that's very difficult to pinpoint. We want to fit in. We want to fucking fit in. We don't want to be out on the outside. You know what yeah. I mean? Natural tribe mentality. Absolutely. But this this world that we live in now is so fucking different. You know, you, you want to yeah. you want to fit in. Social media it does not split the tribes. You know, yeah. we are all different. We see things different ways. It's good to uh, broaden your horizons on, on you know, on, on a lot of different topics. But we will come to a point with certain things where we have a completely different opinion to somebody else because we see the world differently that's what causes trouble i think but uh for me i mean i'm pretty open-minded i'm pretty non-judgmental you know I let li i'm a live and let live kind of guy you know so fear for me i don't even know what am i scared of i'm scared of getting to the end of my life and not have lived it properly i don't if i get fucking wiped out tomorrow i'm good I've, I've, I'm all right. I give a fuck. You know what I mean? I'm, I've dealt with that. My kids are squared away. I've not seen my granddaughter yet. Um, but there's no fear there. You know, there's no fear for me. I've put that shit to bed a long while ago. I get on my life because I'm not fucking scared of dying. That doesn't mean I'm like a psychopath <laughs> jumping off like big buildings and not, not at all. I'm just, I've, I'm not really scared of anything anymore. I put all that all to bed. I've accepted that this is this is what I've got, and I'm happy with what I've got. And How would you say you've managed to get to that point? What were the key things? You showed us some, didn't you just show some boards last time that had I've your got, fear and when I yeah, I mean I wrote yes, uh, this. So this. So back in hold it, 20, up, a bit, hold it up a bit more, Kev. So back in 2019, I did, I was asked to do a talk for the Professional Speaking Association. And I wrote a, a five minute package called Survive to Flourish, where I talked about what, so post Marines, my fucking life fell to bits after the Marines. And it really did, you know, relationship breakups. I buried a few fucking mates. Uh, um, I got kids. I, I can now, you can sit down. <laughs> you got it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, so I, I went through all the shit. I, I basically listed on the survival mode what went on fight flight freeze flood form fatigue so you know fight fighting in my own head not just fighting others running away from problems making no decisions on the freeze flooded up my emotions were just all over the place fawning is like you're just being kept in a hostage situation whether that's a shit boss at work or or, or a, a bad you know personal relationship and then fatigue is burnout so i talked about all that shit i went through i think everyone goes through that and then this, this talk was literally, what would I say to myself on the day that I left the Marines? So three prompts, and this is an immediate action. This is like what you get in the military in the event of a fucking finding a bomb, what do you do? So this you is like three things we can take away and implement yeah. right now. Yeah, exactly. So be harder to kill was literally a reminder to improve your, your mental and physical health. So you keeping clarity and making better decisions. And right on the top of that, is learn to breathe. So, you know, it all starts with the most, the cheapest, simplest way 
learn to fucking consciously breathe learn to understand you know you know you stop for a minute you go fuck me my heart rate's fucking flying something's triggered me you might not even know what it is yeah you can implement straight away a Definitely people will experience that it's just that that's just standard anxiety isn't it and the mind and the body being connected it's massively but the minute you you understand and you go hold on a minute my fucking heart rate's flying i'm gonna go and do a little bit of grounding a little bit of breathing and then crack on so yeah i went through be harder to kill be easier to love and always fill your glass first and it's like it was a series of emotions and feelings that i went through when did i first lose all the fear it was tai chi mate it was meditation and tai chi i just fucking and, and what i did was i surrendered i surrendered to everything that was going on. i was like fuck it all fuck it all i just <sighs> surrendered and went fuck it this is my life i am here because of a culmination of decisions and actions that i've made and taken it's time to just fucking deal with it. Yeah. And just surrendered me. Just gave up. Just fucking gave up. And everything was all right after that. I was like, fuck it. When you say you gave up, what do you mean you gave up on your on your the thoughts that were holding you back? Wrestling, anything. Trying to trying to control things that were out of my control. Key point, mate. Control the controllable. Everything else. Let it fucking fly. So yeah. the Tai Chi, the sort of Taoism style of thought. It's literally everything is happening because it's supposed to happen. Yeah, so we're grateful in advance for anything, for any obstacles that we face. That's something I'm massive on coaching. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So they, they are, you know, how else are you going to grow if, if, if not through discomfort? We do not grow any other way. Yeah. You know, you're, the hardships that you've had in the past, they're your golden nuggets. If, you've, if yes. they still hurt, there's still something to learn. If you're willing to accept that lesson yeah as a gift and that's the difference between fixed and growth i get i get a lot of fucking grief mate i get a lot of people so when these guys come off at me because i think they um <clears throat> i trigger insecurity so a lot of the guys that come to you are, are virtually suicidal right no no not necessarily and they don't, don't always get to know either. Yeah. It, it's a mixture. I mean, some guys, some guys jumped on, jumped on board with me and, they, you know, they're sound. They just want to, they just want to hop out. They're like, oh, yeah. and that's fucking excellent. Because when I first started a few years back, I think what, because I got um, lottery funding and I put it out for free, I had a lot of people turn up with massive drug and alcohol issues and, I, and they just fucking lie. Yeah. When you're deep in that, just they're just lying not just to themselves but to, to me and it's just like what a fucking waste of time i learned a lot in the first year hell of a lot um I, and i do get a lot i, I do i mean I, I messages last night you need to ring such and such he's gone out the house with a bottle of jd and he's going to do something stupid it's fucking nine o'clock at night so one of the lads misses is she's got to me on facebook and i'm thinking the fucking hell you know i'm not his fucking dad yeah you know, that's hard when you're being bombarded. Oh, I'm on a bridge, I'm going to kill myself. Like, for fuck's sake, mate. For the last five months, I've told you to stop fucking drinking. You know, and, I, and I've had this time and time again. And I've messaged, said, look, look, guys. You know, I've messaged, give me a shout, give me a bow. You know, few, they've been on a WhatsApp group and put it on. And three or four of the lads have gone, we're here for you. Just give me a shout. Ten minutes later on Facebook... Nobody fucking cares. I'm, oh, for fuck's sake, just jump off the fucking bridge, mate. Do everyone a favour. That's the dark side of me, you know? But if you can't help yourself, well, fucking don't come and ask me to help you. This is where I am at after three, in my fourth year of working, I have got to cut and shut people that can fucking help themselves and are ready. And those that just want sympathy, and I can't do it. I have yeah. not got the time to work with people who can't wipe their own ass. Um, or I don't mind showing them how to wipe their ass as long as they're willing to do it themselves after. So yeah, it might sound a bit harsh, Lee, but how else, how else can you do a job like this? I think it's something I've actually planned um, a video on this because I think it, it can be a fine line with the empathy. So I can, I can associate to that. You know, I went, <coughs> you know, when I was, 
diagnosed with a personality disorder and I was diagnosed with depression and anxiety. And I went to the doctors with all those feelings. I've been that guy, mate. I've been not that a, guy. It's not everyone not, else's fault. I've been him. Not at one point did I ever tell him how much alcohol I was drinking per week. I kept that. I'll keep yeah. that one under here. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't want to admit that that's half the fucking reason. Yeah. And it took me, you know, 20, 20, 30 years to go, actually, do you know what? Those feelings and emotions are there, but yeah. something I am choosing to do yes. is making them 300 times worse on a daily fucking basis. I stopped drinking years back. And I think that is, I think that was a key component. To it's petrol on a fire. Out. Every time, any type of, so you like, like Lee, you've got this personality disorder. It means you can't control your emotions. It means one minute you're, you're running ultra marathons. The next minute you're lower than a snake's belly. It's like, well, then give that person a bottle of vodka. <laughs> and it's like, however, they can't control it. It's like 10 times more. But I think I've actually planned a video on this. I think where people struggle when they're at that level is... I was still attached to Lee who liked to drink every weekend, Lee who drank at his gigs, you know, Lee who was centre of attention at the party. Yeah. In order for me to move forward, they come to that point where I'm like, I actually need to fucking let go of that person and that Surrender. identity. And the problem is, yeah. I, there's a bit of him that I still kind of like, but I had to just get to that point where I'm like, I cannot be this person yeah. who complain about these problems because I'm fucking creating them with my own actions and my own behavior. Same. Like, the same with food. Like people are attached to being, you know, I've had, and, and again, apologies if this triggers anyone, but I have had it and it's, it fucking pisses me off like you and I'm not, I'm not <laughs> get saying, off, yes. it, you, know, get you know, oh, but we always get a chippy tea every Friday because it's what I do with the kids. We always do this because it's for the kids. We all, and it's like, well, you're basically saying, yeah, I want this different outcome and this different result, but I still want to do all the things that I've fucking done that have got me to where I am. Yeah. And that's the kind of same thing, right? It's exactly the same thing, isn't it? You've you, got uh, to be willing to let go of that person and make change. Yeah, definitely. I mean, have you, uh, have you, uh, Whit is it Whitman's grow, grow model? Do you know the grow model? No. It's dead simple, mate. So the G's goal, the R's like, um, like realistically where you are, the O's, the, or what opportunities you've, have you got that can help you get to the goal? And the W is what you're willing to do. Yes. Fucking dead basic. The hard, I think the hardest thing about goal setting is actually nailing down an absolute specific goal that you can measure yes <clears throat> and I, I, you know i talk about smart targets we did it a lot when we, we was teaching and being specific making it measurable making sure it's achievable making sure it's realistic and having a time bound you know yes, the old, the smart, it's like the smart goal model it's a smart target yeah it's a smart yeah. target but the grow model is like you know you have a goal then you have a look at the realistic area. I use this so many times with people, especially with kids and working on, on uh, you know, like towards GCSEs and stuff like that. And then opportunities uh, and what you're willing. And it's the W. What, the f are you, what are you fucking willing to do to obtain your goal? So what would, you know, and that's the hardest thing for people. Um, but again... Are you willing to give up drinking? Exactly. I fucking, are you willing I to pack drink it up? Are meant. you willing to pack in the chippy tea and the takeaways every Friday? And exactly. deep down, they're not. No. Because it's become such a strong part of their identity. And that is relinquishing your identity and surrendering your identity or who you think you are, because we have fucking, we are not who we think we are. And then that builds into, right, in order for us to... So I need to let go of Lee, who gets smashed at every gig and who's centre of attention and makes everything somebody else's fault. Yeah. I drink because my mum died. I drink because my dad left. I drink. Fuck off, Lee. You're a liar. You drink because you've made a decision to. Yeah. So I have to let go of him. Yeah. But the truth is, again, we're coming into overcoming fears here. We are, absolutely. I'm going to have to go through some discomfort in order to do that. It's so difficult losing your identity. And that was what happened to me. So you grieve your identity. So when I, I left the core, right? So I basically, I got injured jumping out of an helicopter. I was fucking just, I got the best recruiting training. I went off to 40 commando doing all the fucking cool shit. And then it's like, you know, I got, I got took to one side after, in basic, after basic training and said, look, 
um, have you thought about going SBS? Have you thought of going special forces? Like, yeah, I have actually. Okay, go do two years in the unit, do that. Anyway, cutting the story short, I got fucking broke. I got broken. Uh, trying out. Uh, so I didn't make it. And then, then I was uh, put on a set of painkillers called Coproximal, which fuck, I didn't know until last year when I wrote my book that um, when I was researching what I went through, that they just fuck your head up. Yeah. Right? And I'm not blaming that, but that was that I had massively dark thoughts, uh, hallucinations, feeling weak. And I'm in a fucking commando unit. You know what I mean? I'm broken in a commando unit. Got a baby. I've been with Sarah probably five years. We were on and off because I would, I'd not, I'd been Northern Ireland and, and, you know, seen combat and all that shit. And, and basically when I left the Marines, I lost my fucking dream of being, going SF. Uh, my family broke down. Um, I, I couldn't fucking train. I didn't train for six years because my leg was fucked. That never got resolved. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, who the fuck am I? What the fuck am I? I drank, I did loads of drugs. I was playing in a band <clears throat> and I was just, I was fucking anyhow, you know what I mean? I didn't really, there was, no, there was nothing left of who I was. Yeah. It was completely different. That's almost, it's almost identical. So mine was December, 2013, broke my neck playing rugby. February, 2014, three months later, my marriage at the time ended. My grandfather, who was like my dad died and all that happened within that period. And again, yeah. that was like, right, what I'm going to do, right, I'm going to use all this. I can't train. I can't play rugby. Yeah. My ex-wife's a bitch. I'm just going to drink. My granddad's dead. I'll just drink. Cause that's really going to help me solve all those problems. We so we're in that kind of same place. And then yeah. for me, it was having this epiphany where I'm like, I want to fucking die here. I'm going to die or I'm going to end up in jail. Oh, mate, I remember being, I remember lying fucking naked, like on the bathroom floor, blood coming out my nose and fucking twitching away off the cocaine and shit. Just, just thinking, fuck, I just want to die now. I'm fucking, I'm, I'm fed up. I'm sick of this yeah. shit. It, it's just, I don't know, it's dark places, mate. So for me, the, the, again, the route out of that was, you know, the, like I spoke about this in the news articles and the interviews and stuff. You know, I went to... I went to the doctors, I went for help, I got sertraline, I got all these other tablets, I got this psychiatric nurse, I got all this stuff and I'm like, this is just bringing my attention to it and making it even worse. And it, again, it just seemed like, um, you know, it wasn't any help and it wasn't until that was the point when I started personal development. Yeah. And started to learn the thoughts and I was like, well, hang on, you know, you know, how do I change this? And it was that moment when I'm like, you know, do I do I want my mother to have died and then me just wasted my life? Yeah, exactly. Or do I want to go out and do I want to do something where she's going to be looking down saying, do you know what? I didn't waste my life in vain because he's done that. Yeah, yeah. That's the thought that's kind of kept me going. But again, I, I, I get that, yeah. Every day, every day since I've done personal development, I, I have and to do it because otherwise the mind goes back to that place, right? I, and I think, you know, coming back to the fear, it's literally, I get the basics right. Yeah. You know, um, Water. Work on yeah, stress management. Stress management tools are, you know, really important. So if there's things triggering you, work on stress management tools. There's, there's the breathing, the meditation stuff is the fucking bollocks. There's, I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, I cover on, on I did a 28 day online course and, and I cover lots of different ways to look at life. Uh, really open up people's minds uh, to perceive it differently. So stress management is important. Sleep improvement, for fuck's sake, man. If you're not getting enough sleep, that's the key hitter, you know? And then nutritional balance, so important, physical activity. They're the four things that will raise your level of well-being and performance. Yeah. That's it, stress management. And, and stress management is like literally like, you know you're going to go in, Let's say you get a job, you got a job interview, right? Let's look at it this way, right? You got a job interview, you shit in your pants. When I taught kids to go for job interviews, I'm like, ah, look, it's a job interview. You're fucking interviewing them to see if you want yeah. to work for them, right? That's exactly get what I say. Round. Love it. Get your head around it. You are interviewing them, right? That's what you're doing. Don't think that you're, you've got to 
fluff yourself up for them. You go and fucking ask them. You know how much? So how much holiday do you do again? Yeah. You know you you fucking ask them. You interview them. Yeah. What, what opportunities are there for growth if I choose to accept this position? Exactly. How am I going to get treated? Going to speak? You know? Can you show me around the factory or can you show me this? Bottom line is, there is always something new to learn to manage how you feel. So for me, four pillars, right? Stress management, sleep improvement, nutritional balance, physical activity. Combine that with finding meaning in your life and purpose. Yeah. The fuck else is there to do? Community, you know? What else is there to do as a human being? So I would say one thing that I think builds into every single one of them things that you just mentioned as well is, the, uh, the guys love me talking about this, um, having a strategic day plan because it's again it's one thing that I, I massively lose my shit over and you all associate with it from the military and everything through so let's just take one aspect there okay someone will, will and we've got a specific daily form for this which is filled in every day and people will come to me and they'll be like I'm really struggling with my sleep Lee, and I'm struggling pressing snooze and getting up in the morning and then I feel like this and like I said, well, are you using the planner? What's your evening routine and your morning routine? Ah, oh, I haven't really been doing it. And it's like, you're fucking planning to fail. Like, <laughs> how, how can you sleep effectively? And it sounds crazy, right? It's not something people coach, but I have a plan for sleep, which involves my phone going in the drawer at eight o'clock, yeah, yeah. my clothes coming out for the morning so I'm not stressed, making sure, you know, and that makes sure all Logan stuff is ready for nursery for the morning. So we're not sleep routine. Pre-sleep routine, that's what it is. And hydrated yeah. and off to bed. But yet we're in this generation, right, where we sat scrolling until 10, 11 o'clock at night, worrying about work. We've got no plan for tomorrow. And then we've got all this amateur stuff on this to-do list. And we get up and we're like, fucking hell, right, I'm so busy today. Right, what am I going to do first? And then we're off. Yeah. And you're planning to, you're planning to fail, either Definitely. by not having a plan or not having an effective one. I think sleep routines are really are important. If you, I mean, I I remember really fucking struggling with sleep, um, and I, I don't mind sharing why, right? Because it's yeah. fucking horrible. So when me and uh, the ex split up, this is years back. This is twenty years ago. Uh, we had a we had a um, daughter, and obviously we. Is that Ella? Up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Ella. Yeah. yeah, she's fucking nuts, isn't she? Yeah, so okay. we split up, but her mum was going out with other lads while she's still living with me. And I'm like, that was, and I'm sleeping in a different room. And that was probably one of the hardest things I ever had to deal with. Um, fucking hard, that mate. And that's when I learned to, to meditate. Uh, otherwise, somebody would have got killed. That simple. Uh, and, and, and definitely, it was the hardest part of my life was going through that. I'd not long been out of the Marines. Uh, and dealing with that, suppressing that anger and just surrendering to life. Do you know? She was, she got her own life. You know what I mean? It was like the fact that she had to stay. Yeah. Uh, for financial reasons and, uh, and, and all the things that happen. Very difficult, mate. Life's very difficult. And that for me, that was my meltdown. Uh, just wanting to kill someone. And it was a very, very strong feeling. Uh, but how do you deal with it? I learned to meditate. That's what I did. I learned, I learned to realise that my life was, was more important. It was more important for me to direct my life forward so I could be the best dad ever, which is yeah. what, I did. what I did. You know, so I focused. That was my purpose. I found meaning and purpose aside from what I, what I was expecting was to be in a family forever. And it was fucking unicorns, rainbows, all that bullshit. Uh, but the reality was very different and that was the odd bit making so, that, so on that so again, again something we something I coach on uh, in that situation so like you said controlling the controllables so you had this decision at that point yeah. either focus on anger resentment aggression uh, and this thing that I can't yeah, change see. This really? thing that I can't change, which is reality. A lot of people are wasting a lot of energy arguing with reality. It's like this thing's happened. You yeah. can't change it. So if you focus on like the fact that she's a bitch and you want to kill him and that everyone's against you and this is a horrible 
They're it's not the, my words. They weren't my words. Not at any point did I call her a bitch. <laughs> but you'd feel, in what, whatever your feelings were, you'd feel weak and you'd feel helpless. Yep. You essentially can't yep. control what happened. No. And you change that by, well, what can I control? I can control my feelings. My life. Adela, being a role my model. Life. Yeah. And then we feel strong and empowered. So whichever, whichever thoughts we control, we either go weak or we go strong, right? It's, 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 yeah, absolutely, mate. It's even stress management. I mean, the way I dealt with that and the way I de I've dealt with some since. I mean, I've just come out of a seven-year relationship. Well, just not. It was last yeah. August. But again, you know, she wanted to be with someone else. Didn't tell me that. You know what I mean? I had a bit of overlap. And I thought, well, you know, she's just trying to be happy. She didn't really have the courage, to be honest. That fucking hurt. But, you know, I get it. Yeah, I'm all right. I get it because my self worth not depleted. Yeah, as a result of that, it wasn't much fun for the last couple of years. It just took a while for us to realise we weren't compatible. I'm like, she's just trying to be happy. I accept that. I want to be happy. We're not happy together. It's not working. We couldn't work it out. I didn't want to break it. She broke it. Yeah. But, you know, then I kept getting messages and messages. It's like, look, I think, you know, she said the words that ended the relationship. <clears throat> and then I, I, I put the full stop at it. I was like, no, we don't need to talk to each other anymore. You know, we've, I fucking loved the good stuff. Yeah. That stuff was horrible. Obviously, we weren't compatible. It's really difficult. And, and I think, you know, I get a lot of uh, blokes coming to me that struggle with that. Let you let your fucking ex move on. It wasn't meant yeah. to be. You know, they're just trying to be happy. Just fucking this could be in relation to anything, right? Any agreed. Form of agreed. Relationship. Agreed. It's very, it's not it's not easy, but it does all boil down to the your thought processes and the way you perceive life. You cannot fucking control other people. You cannot change other people. You can influence them to change, but you yeah. can change them. They change. You don't change them. Yeah, something something we massively discussed as well because I think a lot of the uh, the team sometimes when they start out on kind of a health and a fitness nutrition or they start doing mindset and personal development and all of a sudden they get this massive payoff. They're like, I never knew about this mindset stuff. I never yeah. knew about hydration, meditation, stretching, any of this. And I feel incredible. And then the first thing they do is like, right, uh, everyone has to be on this journey with me. And if they're not, they're, they're, not, they're not supporting me. And they're like, my partner doesn't support me. And I, I said this to somebody the other day. I'm like, because it fucking the scares them. It the scares thing, people. But the best, best thing is he doesn't have to, right? Yeah. That's the thing about growth, gro inhabiting a growth mindset and then deciding that you're going to um, have a fulfilling life is that it really fucking upsets the status quo, the people that are in your life, they get all upset about it. I see it with my boys, like, and, and, and then their friends that they might have down the pub. Is that because they're kind of highlighting what they haven't found the strength to do yet? But probably deep down... It's bigger insecurities, isn't you? Yeah. It's fucking not easy to, to make those changes. And people in your life, some people in your... You, you find out who your friends are. You've, because it's back to that growth mindset, isn't it? I mean, championing other people's um, success. If you can't find joy in somebody else's success, then you're missing out. I'm just going to shut the door a second. Yeah. Yeah, if you can't, you're missing out on a fucking shitload of happiness if you can't find uh, joy in somebody else's success. Yeah, 100%. Anyone who can inhabit the growth mindset, I are inspired by other people i think as well though a, a big thing on that so like i'm really into business and that isn't she loves crossfit i hate it i love being center of attention and made to feel significant that's her worst nightmare yeah. but just because she it took me a long time to understand this she doesn't force me to love crossfit and i don't force her to try and be a businesswoman but we kind of did in the relationship <laughs> for a while yeah. Like, I need you to do this with me in order for me to be okay. Yeah. And if you don't, validation, you're not supporting me. Mm. And now I think we've just realized, like, you know, it's even in your closest, most loving relationship, you can still.
both be on your own journey of course and you be can. okay with each other without yeah. trying to cause that friction yeah. of trying to drag everyone to your table. If they want to come and sit at your table, they'll make a decision to come and sit at it if you're being a, yeah. a lighthouse, so to speak. However, yeah. if you're a tugboat trying to convince them every day that it's something that you need them to do with you, it's just going to cause friction and arguments, right? Definitely, definitely. Live and let live, ain't it? I mean, I think finding a, um, a compatible partner is <clears throat> it's a fucking challenge. But the yeah. biggest challenge is knowing yourself. That's the biggest challenge, I think. Knowing more, knowing more of who you are, what your personal needs are, and you know your your general outlook on life. Really important. Wicked, right, guys? I'm going to ask Kev a question first because I'm selfish. <laughs> um, but anyone, feel free to put any. <laughs> Any questions in uh, the box now, and I'll fire them over to Kev. So mine is, it's a constant personal struggle, this, and I think I'm getting very close to solving it. I just kind of want your view on it, and I think you will have experienced it from the military. So um, I'm generally okay when I'm smashing marathons, smashing weekly sales targets. I've got adrenaline. I'm just doing, 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 doing. And I find it very, you, but you can only do for so much until you completely burn out. Yeah. That's the point that I find difficult. So again, I think you will have experienced that excitement of being on a battlefield to then oh. shit, then I have to come back to normality, but this doesn't get my juices flowing like that whatsoever. That, that, yeah. Go on. What's all the question? Of a sudden, I'm, not, I'm not okay. And the way I'm dealing with it is I think I'm starting to understand that as long as I'm mindful of not completely physically burning out, maybe I just don't need to stop. I can just keep doing, 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 doing. So what's the question? <laughs> I guess, is there a way to switch off and still feel excited? Still feel okay? To yeah. be relaxed and be chilled in, and... You know, when you, when you got your injury, did you not learn patience when you had your injury? Or, or what did you learn from it? Because uh, I think I will, I will, let me start by saying this, right? And this is a nice little mantra. Resting is doing. Yeah. Right? That resting is fucking doing, mate. So how do I relax? I'll play guitar. Rest the body. Yeah. Rest the mind. I'll play a bit of guitar. I've got to be productive in a different way. Um, I... For me, if you don't master that, you will end up burning out. Your body will just shut you down eventually. But you've got to be taking enough rest, surely, haven't you, to do the things that you're doing? Yes, I guess kind of, yeah. I'm kind of my, so I guess what you're saying is you can still be doing something when you are resting. It doesn't mean doing nothing. So like, yeah, you're not doing nothing when you're, you're not doing nothing when you're resting. You know, you, you're resting. Yeah. You've letting your body repair. Uh, I mean, you can be, once you get your head around that resting is doing, you can still do other things. Yeah. You know I mean, that, that are not physical. Uh, unless you're just a adrenaline junkie, mate, and you're just hooked up on all these. Uh, you I know, am, I am 100%. You know, That's my biggest struggle. Breathing. Yeah. Meditation. Reading. Yeah. Or, or light exercise, like active recovery, is like walking's active recovery. Light walking, to me, is one of the best things for me. It's like a gentle, it's like a rest, but you're still doing. Yeah. Just like, you know, real, real chilled out, little bimble. I like that. That's a good way for me. Uh, but yeah, but just don't forget resting is doing. Yeah. You're a battery, aren't you? We're all, we're all like batteries. You know, we even talk when people talk about electrolyte. You know what electrolyte is? Yeah. What what does that mean to you, electrolyte? Electrolyte, as in salts. Yeah. What does it mean to you? You tell me what electrolyte means to you, and I'll explain why I've mentioned it in batteries. Uh, an electrolyte is something that I would take to keep my fluids on um, yeah. and help yeah. with fluid recovery whilst training on longer. Okay. Rest. So, so in a car battery, this fluid, yeah. Yeah. That's called electrolyte. Without electrolyte in a battery, it doesn't fucking work. 
because that causes the chemical reaction between uh, the two metals in there, the leads and, and uh, stuff like that. So yeah, you're a battery. Don't forget you're a battery. Uh, if you run yourself down flat, you fucked, didn't you? So resting is doing. Resting is doing, 100%. Okay, we've got three quick questions. Go on. Um, Letting go of the person you was whilst being that person who finds it hard to fail or not being the best at what you're doing. I'm not 100% sure what you mean there, Jessica. So I think she means she struggles with letting go of the person she was whilst being the person who finds it hard to fail. So I guess what she's saying is yeah, so yeah. That's, a fear of fail that's a fear of failure. Or fear of not being the best. Which parts of the person do, do you not want to let go? Do you need to let go every every aspect of who you were? What did you like about it, the bits that you want to keep and why? And then fear of failure. Go out and fuck something up really bad. Go out <laughs> of your way to fuck something up. Just go right out of your way to fail the shit out of something. And then go, yeah, fuck it. I'm going to fail. You're supposed to fail. That's how we learn. Yeah, so there are no failures, only lessons. Yeah, that's it. Okay, final one from Pete. With regards to meditation, do you do this as part of a morning routine or is it something that you do as and when needed? Are there any guided meditations that you can recommend? I would recommend looking at Headspace. It's on Netflix as well. I'd, I'd, I'd go straight in and watch a bit of Headspace. Yeah. Uh, on Netflix, that's free. The Headspace apps as well. For me, I don't, I find that I end up my life. So if I, like last night, I went out for a walk uh, with one of the lads, just bombed it on the WhatsApp. Anyone fancy a walk out on the hill? It's only a few miles. I find that I meditate naturally now. So I'll be looking at the trees. And I'll have a, you know, I really, I'm quite engrossed in nature when I'm there. I'm looking. It's not, it's not your stereotypical lay down in a room and put some dolphin music on and, and breathe. You don't have to do that. Right. You know, meditation is literally living in the moment. You, you don't have to do that. You can concentrate on your breathing and while you're walking. I think for me, meditation is is really about resting your thought processes. You know what I mean? In meditation, what usually happens when you sit still is all your thoughts come through and you'll have fucking hundreds of thoughts. But when you really, what you're trying to do is have no mind through meditation. You're trying to have a break. And it is, it is the breathing that brings you to that. I would recommend. Uh, so we're almost rethinking as meditation as just rest and recovery for the mind. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, don't, don't, make heard, big deal out of it. Don't, don't make a big deal out of it. I mean, I, I fish as well. When I fly fish, you know, I've, I've done that in the past. When I got injured in the Marines, I ended up fishing for the fucking Marines. Get anything to get a week off. <laughs> but, but um, you know, I found meditation in casting. And if anyone knows about fly fishing, you got to cast forward and backwards, and it's very fucking graceful. It's almost like it's almost like fucking Tai Chi, the way you're moving. You know what I mean? Yeah. Tai Chi, Tai Chi, slow moving meditation. You know, Tai Chi is just literally a martial arts slowed right down. So we're like, Whoop. again, you know. If it's something that you know you need to uh, address, research, yeah. research it, practice it, review it, you know. And again, I guess realize there's not, there's not one form of meditation that's going to work for each and individual. It's about. Yeah, I mean, if you've identified works for you, if you just want to rest your mind, then you've got to learn to accept the dark, the fundamental darkness of life. I, I, and I'll share this. Um, for no fucking apparent reason, sometimes when I go into the toilet in my house, and it's just the toilet, it's separate to the bathroom, I, I have a fucking dark feeling that Ella's hanging there, she's hung herself. What the fucking fuck is that all about? Right? Mind blown. Completely, she couldn't even do it in there. The, the room's not tall enough. What the fuck is that all about? I've had it a few times, and I'm like, whoo. Now, I know guys that have dark thoughts. I don't know where they come from, but they, they'll have a dark thought that, that fucks them up for the day. Yeah. I'm like, how do you deal with, how do you deal with that when that happens? It's fucking irrational, isn't it? 
it's fundamental darkness. It's normal to have these. I'm like, oh, you bastard. It's a bit weird, isn't it? But you have an awareness now to know straight away and get it handled instantly. Yeah. And I talk about it. And that's the same with any fear or any anxiety or anything. And I talk about it. If we can yeah. talk about it, we can, fix, we can it. fix it. If we can measure it, we can manage it. It's fucking completely irrational. But it happens. It's dark. And I get a lot. I mean, I've had a, you know, and sometimes when I'm a bit low, I do get dark foot. I've seen some horrible shit, you know what I mean? So, so it's going to be normal that, 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 that some things trigger. It doesn't fucking... Yeah. Mean, don't attach meaning to it. Yes, yeah. Do not fucking attach meaning to it because that is fundamental darkness. I think that's, that's a really great point to end on there um, <clears throat> because, again, again, something I discuss, and it, I think it just builds into exactly what you said there. If I used to have a negative thought or a negative feeling or a negative experience, anything at all, it would kind of like I talk about it starting as like a tiny little ball of snow at the top of a mountain. Yeah. And now, as soon as that ball starts rolling, it's like I've got a filter in my, in my brain. Right. Change your environment. Change your thought process. That's what meditation is. Yeah. Let, letting the thoughts come. Letting the thoughts go. And have an awareness to deal with it quickly because if it did we answer was it Jessica? Did we answer her question? Have a quick look at that again. Yeah, I'm not. I wasn't. So her her question was, um, letting. She's not really a question. I don't know if it's just a, a take home that she's had. Letting go of that person you was, whilst being that person who finds it hard to fail. Yeah. Or not be the best at what they're doing. Yeah. Give you some fucking break. You know, you don't have to let go of every, everything of who you are. You're not going to like completely shed your skin and be some, be someone new. And if you if you, say, you like, in order for to be happy, I need to be the best at what I do. You're basically making it physically impossible for yourself to feel happy. Just look for for me, right? When people when I, people say I want to be successful, like, well, you got to define what success is to you. Yeah. And they might say, well, I want a fucking Lamborghini by the time I'm thirty. All right, fair enough. Go out and fucking rob a bank or something if that's gonna make you for me success is peace of mind yeah what's gonna bring me peace of mind well i have to deal with shit to bring peace of mind you know i have to i've got to deal with things to bring peace of mind if something's playing on my mind i've got to deal with it yeah i've got if to you don't it'll get bigger i've got to get a grip on it and decide i mean i've like the hardest thing for me at the minute is definitely the last relationship I was in because I've I've not said all the things I wanted to say because it's fucking pointless. Yeah. But I've worked out for me what makes me feel okay is that I accept she didn't have the courage to be honest with me, you know? That that what pains me is and it's really painful for me. I don't feel like I was understood. But that's fair enough, I get that. Uh, but I wasn't seen, but I was accused of so many things that weren't real. Do you know what I mean? It's like, uh, and so I have this deep rooted thing that I really want to, to get that that wasn't true. But her reality and my reality are two different things. Our reality is what we think. So, I, so for me to maintain that peace in my mind, I've got to accept, I've got to accept that. We all see the world differently. 100%. Uh, very difficult, but success for me is peace of mind. I think if we have that thought as well, Jessica, that in order for me to be okay, I need to be the best and I need not to fail, you're actually setting yourself up to fail and you're not giving yeah. yourself permission to be happy. So a perfect example for, that I will use for this is <clears throat> I coach some of my online business coaches on sales and sales calls okay and the very first thing that I coach on is when I go into that sales call for my higher level plan which is a thousand pounds whether that person decides to invest in me or not I'm completely okay with both outcomes yeah, exactly. because I either found a great person who valued me and wanted to invest or I just found another person who wasn't quite ready. But so many of them, and I think this is what you guys do in life with your fitness goals, your nutrition goals, your business goals, your career goals, 
you basically I have to hit this bar and if it doesn't happen I'm not good enough and I'm not okay and you're not essentially in control of that yeah I mean I, I gotta be honest I think you know success is peace of mind you know don't yeah. do not do, don't set you yourself, can't measure it on physical things no don't don't set yourself goals that are, are fucking you know gonna to punish yourself and this will happen on fat loss as well. Like the scales need to say this at the end of the week. And if they don't, mm. I'm not good enough and I'm not happy. I think the happier you become, the, the, the less you want to comfort eat as well. Yeah. So, so, so where people aspect. are trying to stop eating to become happy, because we comfort eat, we all fucking comfort eat, it's normal. Whereas if you worked on your happiness first, yeah, assist you in your weight loss as well. Yeah. We're complicated, aren't we? Yeah, of course. And I think a big, like, I think we could end on this as well. Also, just to understand that every day is a school day. Oh, God, yeah. You're not supposed to get it all at once. We'll never get it. We don't, we're never no. going to really understand ourselves either. Well, you, that, that was what my video was on this morning. I said, you know, there isn't, this isn't a, this is a never ending journey. It is. So just enjoy it, right? Just remember, we're all work in progress. That is fucking... Yeah. We will be work in progress till we go, until we leave the planet. But we get lost in, I need to do this and I get this, and that will always then follow with what next? Give yourselves a break. Give yourselves yeah. a big hug. Love yourselves a bit more. And, yeah, enjoy. Enjoy life. It's a fucking gift massively amazing to end on kev thank you so much for your time no problem. Um, literally couldn't be more appreciative and um, can't wait to meet up with you again fantastic Get on another epic jaunt and yeah thanks again <laughs> have an thanks amazing everyone. Time. thank you all I hope you have a wonderful day and uh yeah enjoy life it's there for the taking amazing thanks buddy nice one mate see you later bud <laughs>